Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 221. As always, I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also, make sure to check out the Code Karate Patreon page. Now today, we are going to be going over the rabbit hole module in Drupal 8. And you might be wondering, what is the rabbit hole module? Well, essentially, it's a module that allows you to control how different entities on your site uh, get displayed in a way. So you can choose if you want to display the entity or maybe you want to redirect it to another page. Now why might this be useful? Well let's say you have an image slideshow and you created a content type with just images. You don't really want people on your site to be able to get to those individual image pages because they're actually just part of that slideshow. So if they somehow get to that specific node or that entity on your site, you'd rather just redirect them to either the front page of your site or maybe a slideshow page or something else. And there's a lot of different scenarios where you don't want people to actually get to and be able to view certain entities and you'd rather just either show a page not found or redirect them off to a different page. So the rabbit hole module is a really useful little module that's super easy to set up. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we're on the rabbit hole module page and the options are to deliver an access denied page, deliver a page not found page, issue a page redirect to a path or external URL, or simply do the normal behavior of displaying the entity. And you can actually control this per bundle and per entity. So back on my Drupal 8 test site, I will show you the modules that I have enabled to make this rabbit hole module work. So if I look here, I have the main rabbit hole module, which of course is required. I also have the rabbit hole nodes module. You will see that you can do this for media entities, for taxonomy, to users, any type of entity where a user might be able to get to the entity page and you want to control that behavior. So again, in this case, I only need the nodes module because I'm only doing it for one specific content type but you may need others and that's why there are different options here. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure those are installed. And then I'm going to take a look at my various content types on my website. So if you watch the last video, I created a slideshow and I used a content type called image slider. I don't want users to actually be able to get to the individual image slider pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to edit and you will notice there's rabbit hole settings, which wasn't there before. Clicking on that, it gives you the behavior that you want to select. It also gives you an option to allow these settings to be overridden for individual entities. And this means if someone with the administer rabbit hole settings permission, uh, they can actually change this on an individual entity level. So you can choose to allow that or not. I will just go ahead and leave it at the default. But then I'll look at the behavior and say, if I want an access denied page, I want a page not found or I want to issue a page redirect. So let's test out the page not found and see how this works. If I save the content type and I go to my content, you will see that I have an image slider called slide two and one called slide one. Let's go ahead and open this up. And you might be wondering, why do I see it? Well, it's because I'm an admin. Let's go ahead and actually look at it as an anonymous user. So I just open up an incognito window and I go to this page and you'll notice I get a page not found. That's exactly what I wanted. Let's also now look at if we change this to a redirect, how that might work. So if I go back to my content types here and I go to my image slider content type and I edit it, I'm going to change this to page redirect. And you can actually use tokens here if you wanted to. You need the token module installed if you want to you know, be able to use this token browser here. So I can click that. I could go through and I could use or look for a specific token to drop in there in the redirect path. This could be useful if you wanted to create a way to uh, be able to customize what each image redirected to or what each of these pieces of content redirected to. But I just want it to redirect to the slideshow page. So I have a slideshow page on the site. If they actually go to one of the images that should be part of that slideshow, why not just make them go to the slideshow page? And I can select the response code, either moved, permanently, found, 
or any of those others, you can go ahead and click here to see what uh, the different response codes mean. I'll leave it at the default just to show how it works. The other thing you're going to want to make sure you do is clear the cache. Anytime you change these, it doesn't always take right away. Clear the cache and then it always seems to work. So give it a, a second here for the cache to clear. And once it does, we'll go ahead and check out if we can access this piece of content. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and try to go to this page now. And you will see that it redirects me to the slideshow page. And the slideshow just has a slideshow with a couple different images on it, but it doesn't actually let me get to that piece of content. And that's really all there is to it. The rabbit hole module is a very simple utility module to prevent access and to control the behavior for certain entities that you maybe don't want users to be able to see. So if you're building out the content structure of your website and you're worried that you know, there are some of these content types that are used in views or somewhere else and you don't want them to get to that node page, the rabbit hole module is probably the module you're looking for just to prevent that behavior or that the ability to access that page. So that's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. I will see you next time.